There's a cardinal rule you never want to break. Never ride down something you can't ride back up. After returning from Tierra del Fuego, Chad busied himself with some maintenance and minor repairs, while I did my best to keep him sane. There were no more dragons to slay, at least not in our small kingdom, and our ever-present legal issues were taking a toll on his mental health. Looks a little sketchy. What do you think? You think we make it across? Using the good weather we were afforded as an excuse to suspend reality, we took advantage of any excuse to take a ride. Whether it be out to Seno Obstruction to check out a friend's construction project and lend a quick hand, or an impromptu camping trip with Max and Rahina en route to meet our attorneys in Punta Arenas, Clearly, both Chad and Max had some steam to blow off. <laughs> wow. Let's have this our celebrations. Let's forget and who forget what we get well. After delivering the financial documents subpoenaed by the local prosecutor's office, we returned home and occupied ourselves responding to various legal complaints that had been filed in response to our lawsuits. Yeah, there's nothing I'd rather be doing than reading audit reports and financial documents and responding to lawsuits. And yeah, I'm a little bit fried. Yeah. Um, trying to understand 25 pages worth of legalese in English, but then when you have to translate it from Spanish, yeah, you know, it's just like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of done. Oh, I'm sorry. For two and a half days, and and uh, I'd rather, much rather, be doing something else right now. I can tell you that. But enough <clears throat> of that. Let's get back to writing. With summer drawing to an end, and the weather rapidly changing we realized that we may have only time for one more ride before returning to the States for winter. All right, babe, this is the moment of truth. You can go check it. Yeah. Despite having highlighted just about everything on the map, not to mention a lot of roads that aren't, there was one that had succeeded in eluding us. Yes. Now we're talking. Y-160 passes through the eastern reaches of Torres del Paine, past Laguna Azul, through a number of estancias and along the Rio Zamora, before ending a stone's throw away from the Argentinian border. Hey, horses. Yeah, bring it up. We had attempted to explore this road last October, only to find the gate locked at the park boundary. Taking a short side road past a local quincho, we descended to Rio Zamora, stopping at a familiar spot. Recognize this? Well, it looks familiar, but I don't know why. That's where the waterfall is. Really? Yeah, these are, this is where we came down with Max and Regina last time. Wait, so we were on the other side. We were on the other side of the river Whoa. from Dos Dinero. Yeah, okay. And we came down here, and that's the confluence. This is the Zamora River, and that's the Las Chinas River. Yeah. We had descended the hill on the opposite bank of the river over New Year's with Max and Regina before taking a plunge at the base of the Florence Dixie Falls. 
this route to the confluence had been considerably easier. After a short coffee break, we ascended back to the main road before detouring once again down a double track back towards the northern boundary of the park, where we unexpectedly found what ended up being my favorite puesto of all time. Check this place out. I definitely want to stay here. <laughs> this is so cool. Man. Yes. This is very Blair Witch. Look at this. Look what's in the pot. Nothing? It's empty? For now. For now? Yeah. You want to make a stew? Very cool. Looks like back here we have the, the bedroom, the dormitory, ooh, and what appears, I think it's dead, yeah, what appears to be a dead armadillo, wow. I wonder if he's the former occupant or if he was perhaps dinner. Wow, that's, uh, that's funky. That's funky indeed. Is that the is that the uh, chief's headdress or is this some sort of voodoo action going on in here? I'm not sure, but I think because of this, I get special powers. Or something. <laughs> I don't know. You should try drinking some of the uh, magic potions in the jars and see what happens. <laughs> Talking about magic powers. Well, this place is wild. Yeah, look at these bones. Oh man, is that food? Uh huh. Oh yummy. This is food. There's. Uh... See, we didn't have to pack groceries after all. Yeah, there's plenty of provisions here. There's, uh, these look like beans, I guess. Wow. Wild. Well, someone's, I mean, it looks like someone has all of their canned foods alphabetized. This is Barba del Viejo. <laughs> oh, yeah? It is. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is definitely one of the funkier puestos I've come across. This one's my definite favorite. Yeah? You want you ready to move in? This one's cool. You like it? Yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't say that at night by myself. <laughs> but <laughs> once I'm the feeling really brave, like, during the day. Once the sun goes down, you're not so sure anymore? Yeah, and the armadillo <laughs> starts coming after me. <laughs> armadillo comes back to life. <laughs> yeah. After seriously considering claiming squatters' rights, we continued down the double track, further from the beaten and closer to the park. All right. It's been real. Rose doesn't want to go. She wants to. She wants to stay here. She's ready to move in. I want to uh, go up the road and see where this track takes us. After traversing a narrow canyon, we came to a rise above a beautiful valley below. Tempting as it was. Chad was uncertain of the actual park boundary and didn't want to risk riding illegally on park property. We're out to the other side, but uh, believe it or not, I'm actually a little nervous about being back here. Refusing to succumb to my peer pressure, Chad turned around and we backtracked to the public road. Shortly after passing the final estancia and navigating through a horse gate, we started a steep descent back to the banks of the river. Beyond this point, the status of the road, the final 20 kilometers to the Argentinian border, was a bit of a mystery. The further we descended, the steeper it got, and the more it deteriorated. And this might be the end of the road.
There's a cardinal rule you never want to break. Never ride down something you can't ride back up. And this is looking like a big, nasty, gnarly, rutted mess below us. So I'm going to scout ahead. After navigating bike swallowing ruts on narrow horse trails, Chad decided to scout the rest of the route on foot. Man, this is a gorgeous little spot down here. Little abandoned puesto down there. Just a little confluence at the river. There's trees down there, which would make a beautiful camp spot. Man, it's just doable enough to make it very tempting to try to ride down here. But, you know, it's just gnarly enough to really give me pause. I'd have to hug this side just to try to get through these baby heads here. And I don't even think this is the worst of it. There's some worse rutted out shit up above. You know, obviously you can't tell in this video how steep that is, but it's fucking steep, I promise you. As Chad struggled to reconcile brains versus balls, a Bacchiano working his cattle rode down to find out what the hell we were doing. Upon informing him of our intent to ride to the border and camp by the river, he informed us that this section of the road had not been maintained in a decade and was impassable by anything without hooves. At that, he simply wished us good luck and rode away. Oh, as much as I hate to say it, I think, uh, I think I'm going to err on the side of caution on this one. I think cooler heads must prevail. I just, uh, I don't like our chances of having to extract the bike. If A, it ends up in one of these giant uh, ruts, or uh, B, just uh, we don't have enough traction trying to get back up that hill. Um, it's just going to be a lot of struggle. And uh, as beautiful as it is down there, as perfect a camping spot as that is, I don't know. I just have my, I have my doubts. I think, uh, I think we're going to retreat and uh, live to ride another day. Go find somewhere else to pitch our tent for tonight. Sorry, babe. <laughs> Pussy, pussy. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> Just kidding. Defeated, having once again failed to reach the end of the road, we turned around in search of a suitable campsite for the night. After ruling out the remote puesto for fear of demonic possession, we decided to ride down to the confluence at the Las Chinas River. Once again succumbing to reason and all of the online ribbing Chad had taken over his tires, we decided to hike our gear across the river as opposed to riding across. He didn't tell me how freezing cold this water is. Turns out the water was much colder than I had recalled. <laughs> hey babe, I can see your butt. That's a step, a step too far. 
lyrics? No, I don't. After dinner cooked by the campfire and a night under the stars, we retired to the tent for a few hands of gin rummy before turning in for the night. Early the next morning, as Chad was enjoying his coffee next to the waterfall, I awoke to crippling back pain. After packing up camp, I did my best to gingerly make my way across the river while Chad ferried our camping gear. It was then I realized how much trouble I would have been in if we had attempted to continue our descent the previous day. Riding back out would have involved serious effort on both our parts, effort that in my condition, I would have been unable to exert. Okay, well, I, th I, th I think we can all agree that the humane thing to do at this point is to put her down. I don't know, it just started hurting. I think it was all those um, like really advanced dance moves I did last night. Is that what it was when you were popping and locking? Yeah. You, th you threw your back out? <laughs> yeah, and now it's killing me. It was hurting all last night. Yeah, you were, uh, you were moving very gingerly across that river. Yeah, once I was in the water, there was no turning back, so I just had to go through, but I was dying. You gonna be okay riding back, or should I just bury you here? You have a shovel? No, but I could dig with my hands. <laughs> Just leave me in the open air, that way the uh, animals can at least eat me. Or maybe we could just put like a, a Viking funeral pyre together. I'll <laughs> construct a raft and then float you down the river and light it on fire. <laughs> I don't know, I think you have to be a Viking to do that. It's though. a proud death. Yeah. Riding out, Chad took over gate duty and did his best to make the ride as smooth as possible while I did my best to hold on and not pass out. Luckily, other than a mishap with one of our straps, we made it home without incident, where I recovered in bed for two days. And Chad continued to lament the fact that there really were no more dragons to slay. Souvenir. <laughs> 